Among many other things, failure to implement change in our professional or maybe in personal life is one of the major contributor behind our frustration. Every organization takes number of transformation projects either internally or by engaging external consultant. But unfortunately, many of these projects doesn't yield the desired outcome. We identify best solution, we identify best strategy, but often we fail to factor the most critical aspect of change implementation, that is people resistance. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to discuss people aspect of change implementation. But before going there, before going there, I need you to do me a favor. As I'll take you through various characteristic type and personality trait, I need you to write the name of the person against of this personality trait to whom you can best resemble these characteristics. Clear? These people perennially suffer with anxiety and fear of uncertainty. No matter how positively you articulate your proposition to them, they will be still anxious. And they are always suffer with the wrong assumption. I can share you with a story with my previous experience. In one organization, we are trying to do the procurement transformation, trying to improve PR to PO, uh, RFQ process, vendor selection, all these things. But many of the people from procurement department was under the impression it's actually a manpower optimization project. And it took a great time and effort to actually convince them the otherwise objective. The next come traditionalist. These are the people who always try to stuck to their as is way of working, whether those working is giving them result or not. These are like a sloth hanging from a tree branch, no matter how hard you push, they'll not move. And the moment you will present them something with logic and data, which is not as per their self belief, they will resistant. They will start creating resistance for you. I know one production in church personally, when his organization undertook a business process reengineering project to improve their performance, he was scattered all over. He struggled a lot to actually comprehend the new way or, of working, but he finally failed. And he was so devastated, friend. He actually resigned and joined a much smaller company. So this is the traditionalist people, how they create the resistance. Next come the comfort seeker. These kind of people don't want to go out from their comfort zone. They have set a routine for them. And the moment you try to disrupt their routine by even the tiny fraction, they will come against you. This type of people always create a tribe in their organization. You will not find only a single comfort seeker in any organization. There will be always a tribe scratching each other back. I'm telling you another interesting story. I was doing a project with another, another company to improve their quality performance. So among many other system element, one element was to improve their sampling process. So we have redefined their sampling frequency, which was higher than earlier. So it was resistance. None of the quality executive was ready to do a higher sampling frequency. However, we observed one person is so extreme, he even go to an extent to fudge the data. So this is the problem with the comfort seeker type of people who create the resistance. Next come the controller. These are the people who try to control every aspect of their environment, like uh, how the other team member should work, what should be his job description, or maybe even how should his manager should work. These people don't ready to lose any of their comfort at any cost. If you go deep inside, often you will find this kind of people are lacking of self-confidence and fear of exposing weaknesses. That's why you don't want to lose the set control who has created over the years. The pessimist. This is a funny group of people. They, have, they are having an inherent capability to find out the negative aspect first. No matter how positive your proposition is, they have the capability to find out even the remotest distance possible negative outcome. Let me share you an interesting story. We are doing a project with an automotive company. And we are, as a part of transformation, we have suggested to outsource some of the non-core activity to a specialized vendor. 
So couple of senior person from the procurement department and other department try to leverage all the possible platform to express their concern ki what if that vendor go bankrupt. Let me give you a perspective. The company I am talking about is something around 700 CR and revenue and the specialized vendor we are talking about at 15,000 CR revenue. You will find another characteristics with this kind of people. They will say ki nothing can improve in this organization nothing can improve in our organization i have observed one thing these are generally is the longest tenured employee of that particular organization who is not ready to leave either so these are the kind of pessimist people you will get in every organization the bargainer it's another interesting characteristic uh, characteristic trait you can say whenever you will go to them with a proposition they will accept it in the first say they will accept it but there will be always a however attached to it let me give you an example you go to them they say something like that yes we have to do it however to do this i need 10 more extra people i need end-to-end -end automation or perhaps i need a new production line not a story but just try to picture this your current sales team is using a bullock cart to visiting their dealer and distributor network. After many sleepless nights, you have come up with a proposition. Instead of a bullock cart, an automotive four-wheeler will be a much better alternative. Now this bargainer will come into the picture. They will need a AC into that four-wheeler. A music system with the Apple and Android CarPlay. Or even a ventilated seat. Who knows? So these are the bargainer people you will encounter in many organizations. Next come the only hard workers. And this is by the way my personal favorite. You will find at least one in every organization. And these are the people are easy to identify. You don't need to put any effort. They will themselves come to yourself and will tell something like, yesterday I was the last person leaving office. Last Sunday, I spent entire day to prepare that presentation. Do you know last week CEO called me to discuss CEO succession planning with me. So these are the only hard worker people. These people also believe because of their evil shoulder, their company is still standing straight. And except them, no one else is actually working in their organization. In the extreme level of this behavior, Friends, you might find them arrogant and insulting other in public. So these are the only hard worker kind of people. Next type, few good manager. These are the actual people in first appearance or your first interaction. You, you may find them hard, little bit rude or even bully. But once you present them with logic and proper data, they will not only accept your proposition, but they will also lead your proposition. These are the example of few good manager. For few good manager, you don't need any strategy for them. Rather to deal with this kind of people, you need a strategy for you. You have to be rational, you have to be logical, and you have to be thorough in your homework before presenting to them. Now, there are many other classes many other subclasses of people if you would like to understand that in detail you can simply go to google and just type these headings of this presentation you will find lack of web pages thousands of videos and over then there is chat gpt who can even summarize that to you but now coming back to our earlier exercise if you can remember i have requested to do something so i believe you have written a name or couple of name against each of these characteristic trait. Now, if you fail to write any name against any one of these characteristic trait, there is a fair chance that you may possess that characteristics either in full or at least in part. We need to remember one thing. It's not only us who are trying to implement something new or trying to some implement try to improve something. There are other colleagues, there are other family members who are also trying to do the same. 
and perhaps we are the source of their frustration. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience.